Episode 193 of the Interpretation Station is called to order. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. How are you all doing on today? It is the 14th of October today, and uh, we've got a we've got a big episode for you today. Oh, this is really important. It's my first uh, span one for my uh, my Spanish speaking followers in quite some time, at least breaking down a text. And I, I felt I had to do this. I, I've I've got to do this today because. So tomorrow I'm leaving on a mission. A mission. I'm going for uh, six days to Abu Dhabi of all places. Yes, it's quite good timing because here in um, in in Switzerland we've had a uh, real beautiful. It's, the autumn's been beautiful so far. The last three or four weeks have been sensational weather, and just today it's turning. The weather's turning. It's pissing it outside, and it's going to be grim, grey, by all accounts for for the next week, and. Just in time, just in time, I am leaving then the country tomorrow, going to Abu Dhabi, leaving the wife, leaving the kids to uh, to, to deal with the rain and grain. And I'm going to Abu Dhabi where I think I saw it was like 37 degrees tomorrow. Uh, take my shorts, my swimming trunks, sit out in the sun. Apparently I might have to do a bit of work as well, but I suppose that's part of the deal, isn't it? So uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm in the race against time. I have to film this episode and edit it and try and post it all before I leave. So we'll see how I go. Now, this episode, of this, this statement I've taken today, uh, it's from a meeting that I did uh, this week. Um, it was, oh my God. Venezuela, at, uh, before the uh, reporting to the Human Rights Committee, Monday afternoon and Tuesday morning. It was uh, it was a bloodbath. I, oof, that was one of my my top four, five most memorable meetings. Jeez, maybe even top three. Oh my god! Just just so six hours, just wall to wall, almost wall to wall, mainly Spanish, some French as well. Um, but my God, I, I, I felt that one. Whew. It had this, this meeting had everything. I mean, you could listen to the whole six hours of the meeting and you could learn so, 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 so much, by the way, from bureaucratic talk into to Venezuelan slang, legalese, arguments, oh my God, between the delegation and the, del and the committee members. This this meeting had it all. It, it, like I say, it, it was a it was a bloodbath. And uh, so today, what I've taken is just one small segment of it. Right? It's just the the opening presentation by the head of delegation. Uh, I'll share the screen so you can see uh, Ivan Gil Pinto, who is okay, Ministro del Poder Popular para Relaciones Exteriores. Now, if you ever do much stuff with Venezuela, who again? I know I do a lot of Venezuelan stuff, okay? I've got no, I don't know. <laughs> I, it's just that they have the most interesting statements. I, I'm, I, I would do more, you know, I don't know, Panama and Mexico, whatever, but the, their statements just aren't as interesting. There's just, there's not just, there's just not as much interesting vocabulary as you get with the Venezuelan statements. It doesn't matter what you think of the, the country. I, I've never been there. I have no particular opinions on that, but I, I love the statements the, uh, the Venezuelans give. You always learn so much new stuff. Now, if you know anything about the Venezuelans, all their ministries, they're all called this, uh, or the ministers, ministries, Ministro del Poder Popular, okay? Then para relaciones exteriores. So literally, the minister of the popular power for foreign uh, foreign relations. Okay, so that all the ministers are called that. Now, what I find, what I basically did, and, and whenever they refer to another ministry or another minister, they always call it el minister del el ministro del poder popular para asuntos económicos, whatever it is. So you, you find you just skip, you just leave out the poder popular after the first time. You just call them the, whatever the economy minister or the finance minister. So you don't really need to just keep, it takes up a lot of words, minister of the popular power for foreign relations or for minister of the popular power for interior affairs. So you just find, you just, just leave it out uh, after you give it the first time. So this was their fifth periodic report. 
Ok, evaluación del quinto informe periódico de la República Bolivariana de Venezuela. Again, first time you want to be calling them perhaps when they men it's mentioned the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. That's their constitutional name. And you want to uh, mention it. You don't have to mention it. You know, you don't have to render it every time. But here and there, when, you've got, when, you're, when you're feeling quite relaxed, throw it in just to remind that, you know, it's, it's always good to score a brownie point with the delegation okay so okay let's just get into it because like i say i'm uh, in, a, in a race against time i leave my flight to to abu dhabi is tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning so i need to try and finish this it's like 18 pages long this statement 18 pages long uh thankfully with the uh, the, the the venezuelan typescript is always quite big so it's not actually as long as it seems hopefully we can get through this in maybe an hour Okay, so let's get started. So, um, treaty bodies, human rights committee, they all have chairs. It was a lady, in fact. Uh, she is from Paraguay, I think. So even she was speaking Spanish. Everyone was speaking Spanish, I tell you. Um, including, like, there's the Portuguese member, of, you know, if, you, if you listen to the rest of the, uh, the recording of the... Uh, of the, uh, the, the the transcript the, the port there's a portuguese committee member who usually speaks english but even here so he, he he was asking all his questions in spanish as well some of that some of his stuff is very difficult to do uh, but also in this statement lots of numbers so i would advise to advise you to perhaps you know try it on the foot try it without the text maybe to really challenge yourself Admittedly, so I received this text. Okay, I had I had a bit of time to prepare. Maybe I had I had a few minutes to prepare. Give yourself maybe you know it's up to you. Give yourself five minutes to maybe look through it, prepare it, try it on the fly if you're fe feeling brave. You know you can find if you go to the the to the the, the, the human rights committee. Their, their website, you can find all the relevant reports. I, I was reading the, the previous night, I was reading through all the reports from the government reports, the uh, what's called the list of issues that the uh, the committee members have, uh, the NGO reports, so you can do a bit of background. Reading. The most obvious background reading to do is maybe the actual Venezuelan uh, state report to give yourself an idea of uh, some of the names, some of the main uh, projects, uh, some some of the main um, acronyms that you need to know, etc. So that's one way you can do it. Prepare it, and then what you do is, you know, try it, record yourself, print off the transcript, or however you know do it these days. Some of you don't even need to print the transcript off. You can just mark it up online, and then watch the episode. Watch me break it down and see if you can learn any new words, and you will, I'm sure of it. With this one, I'm sure you will. Okay, so thank you, Madam Chair. Now, reciban el fraternal saludo. Okay, this is a sort of, a sort of Spanish thing, isn't it? Uh, uh, receive, so like almost an imperative. Receive fraternal greetings. So I just, you know, you can just leave that out and you just say, either you can just say, uh, fraternal greetings from the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, particularly from the constitutional president, Nicolás Maduro Moros. Or we, you can just put it in a more sort of English style uh, fashion where you would say, we extend uh, uh, fraternal greetings from the Re Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. You don't have, you know, you don't have to uh, render it in exactly the same way as in Spanish. Receive fraternal greetings. That sounds strange in English, right? And again, here we, 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 we go again. A respectful greetings also from the high delegation uh, that is accompanying me today, which includes conformada por. So again, I would just perhaps uh, cross that out. Just So just respectful greetings from. Okay, Fiscal General de la República. So I was actually, so this guy is the Attorney General, actually. Okay, Fiscal General. It depends, you have to, you know, it varies from country to country, what they call, I know the... Um, some yeah, it varies from country to country what they call. I know, like in Mexico, I'm seeing here Procuraduría General de la de la República, um, the Attorney General. Here they got yeah, Fiscal General. This guy is anyway, so he's the Attorney General of Venezuela, Tarek William Saab. Then we have the second Vice Chair of the Supreme Court of Justice uh, and President of the Sala de Casación Civil. This was the Civil Appeals Chamber, okay? Sometimes you can work, you, cassation you can say sometimes, but again, in the report, it was specifically rendered as the Civil Appeals Chamber. Uh, sometimes you just have to wing these, uh, the, 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 these titles, okay? 
as long as you get get it close, it's, it should be fine. Uh, Vice Minister for Multilateral Themes in the Ministry of the Popular Power for Foreign Relations, Ruben Darío Molina. Okay, there we go, Poder Popular. Uh, Vice Minister for Interior Policy and Legal Security from, and here I might just miss, start missing out Poder Popular, from the Ministry for Interior Relations, Justice and Peace. Alana Zaluaga, uh, Ambassador Perm Rep to the United Nations in Geneva, Switzerland, Hector Constant, you can, you know, Perm, perm Representante Permanente, say Perm Rep, BR, and other ministerial de directors, officials, and human rights experts from the state of Venezuela. Okay, Madam Chair. Uh, Venezuela asiste ante este committee, comes before this committee in a constructive spirit or in a constructive frame of mind. Sometimes I say frame of, frame of mind. If you say exhibir nuestros logros, I mean, you could just say we've come to show off our achievements. We've come to lay out. We've come to dem We've come to set out or we've come to showcase did you like that word we've come to showcase our achievements and progress in implementing los postul postulados consagrados so you could say the provisions enshrined or you just say that the consagrados is almost is almost uh, uh superfluous so you can say an implementation of the provisions of the covenant okay so this is the, so the human rights committee its sacred text, if you like, is the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, okay? Remember, when you do human rights, the group into sort of two sections. You've got civil and political rights, and on the other, you've, got, you've also got economic, social, and cultural rights. So that, that's what, that, the economic and social and cultural rights, that's the, uh, that's the, the mandate for another committee, okay? That's the Committee on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, as it happens. But the Human Rights Committee deals with civil, political. So you'll find that they often come in these packages, civil and political on the one hand, economic, social, and cultural on the other. Uh, okay, so and you can call it also if you're in a hurry the ICCPR, okay, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. And to set out the challenges that still that persist in este ámbito again in this sphere, or could you just leave it out maybe? If you were going very fast, if the speaker was going fast, you might go with them. Uh, nuestro ferreo compromiso. Now, I said, so I did this, this statement. You can actually listen to me doing it, my, my version. Uh, I said our ironclad commitment. I think I was really stuck on trying to, uh, 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 trying to um, replicate this ferreo, getting that idea of iron in. Perhaps a bit maybe in English. We, we talk about ironclad commitments. We talk about ironclad guarantees, right? Maybe, I don't know, our unfortunate flinching commitment, our steadfast commitment would have been just fine as well. Con el cumplimiento with upholding, with complying with, with delivering on, uh, assumed international obligations, uh, was demonstrated with the presentation of periodic reports. Okay, los órganos creados en virtud de los tratados de derechos humanos. So literally, to the organs created pursuant to the human rights treaties. Or, if you're in a real trouble, you could just say the treaty bodies. So presentation of the in periodic reports to the treaty bodies. That's what they are. That's just a long-winded way of saying the treaty bodies, the, the organs created pursuant to the human rights treaties, the treaty bodies. Uh, and their protection with very high-level delegations uh, headed by... Now, I'm going to give you another incredible shortcut here. Okay, but we're going to first give you the literal... Uh, rendering the ministries of the uh, offices who impact directly on uh, implementing uh, public policy in, in the relevant field. Okay, if you were just going word by word, I, I can't remember exactly what I said, but that's basically, um, you know, you know, it's the um, the offices in whose uh, whose. In the, in the offices whose purview includes implementation of public policies in that field. But here's the shortcut I, I was thinking. Uh, so their protection with very high level delegations headed by the line ministries. That's it. The line ministry. What is the line ministry? The line minister. They're just the guys who are responsible for implementing policy in that specific area, which is just what it says there. Okay, with the line headed by the line ministers, you could get away. I, I tell you, you could get away with that. Okay, if you're in real trouble, that's where you just have to sometimes think outside the box, right? 
Okay, in little less than a year, this is the fourth uh, evaluation. This is the fourth evaluation that we have undergone of a periodic report before a treaty body. All right. I think evaluation or assessment, um, you can see, either. usually I tend to lean towards assessment with it when I hear evaluation. Um, but for some reason, or perhaps a review. This may be the fourth re uh, review. Remember that the, the Universal Periodic Review, which is, you know, it's all to do with reviewing implementation of the treaty bodies, is called in Spanish el EPU, Evaluación Periódico Universal. Okay, so maybe the review could work just as well here for Evaluación. Uh, presentation of this fifth report covers a period uh, which has marked a crucial uh, moment for humanity. El terrible impacto, the terrible impact, the devastating impact of the COVID pandemic. Okay. The imposition, now here we go, of neo-colonial, recetas neo-colonialistas recipes. Okay. I think I went, and I'm perfectly happy with what I did there, of neo-colonial recipes of domination against the countries of the global south. Uh, incremento desproporcionado, the uh, disproportionate increase in the use of force by the hegemonic countries, um, are among other great grave threats, which continue to poniendo in vilo, jeopardize, okay, jo compromising, jeopardize is maybe better, endanger uh, peace and regional and global stability. Frente a un mundo complejo y conflictivo. Uh, given this complex, conflictual world. Do we say conflictive in English? That doesn't sound quite right, but conflictual world. Venezuela maintains its Bolivarian diplomacy of peace. You definitely want to be saying Bolivarian here, okay? Specific, you know, it's Bolivarian diplomacy of peace. Rechazando de plano cualquier. Uh, rejecting outright uh, any... Interve uh, via injerencista, rejecting outright any interventionism that uh, vulnera los principios, that undermines, that erodes, I can't remember which I used, I may have said erodes, the principles of respect for sovereignty, the right to self-determination of peoples, territorial integrity, and non-intervention or non-interference, you can more or less use them uh, interchangeably, in the internal affairs of states, uh, enshrined in the UN Charter. You know, that's a very much a standard boilerplate position there of the uh, Venezuelans. Madam Chair, or oh, just take a breath, just leave it out. There is in our country a state which it promotes and guarantees human rights, particularly civil and political rights. Nevertheless, in el lapso analizado, analizado, so what they always say here is in the reporting period, that's the, you know, okay, in the lapse of time under analysis, you could say, but really just means in the reporting period, so what's covered by the report. We must stress that Venezuela has ha sido objeto de una perversa estrategia. I think I said Venezuela has been targeted by una perversa estrategia. Did I say an outrageous strategy? I'm looking here, what other options it gives for perversa, uh, nefarious, diabolic, rotten to the core. So I think, yeah, outrageous I always find is also what works very well if you're, never, if you're not certain. An outrageous strategy of um, reprehensible strategy of regime change promoted by the US government and the international ultra-right. Uh, which has included constantes agresiones, uh, constant aggressions, uh, I think I said at the time, maybe non-stop, non-stop is a good uh, word in this in this sort of context, non-stop aggressions or attacks, attempted coup d'etats and uh, magnicidio, all right, so if you look that up in, uh, in the dictionary, you'll see there is a word magnicide in English, but I think, to be honest, Nine out of ten people wouldn't be quite certain what it meant. I, I, well, I'm not entirely certain what magnicide means in uh, English. So you also get the option of assassination. So I think assassination is maybe the, the, the safer one to go with. So attempted uh, coup d'etats and assassinations. Uh, sabotage of our industria petrolera. Remember, I'm always inclined to hear petrolera. I always, always have to stop myself from saying petrol. It's not quite right, is it? It's oil. 
sabotage of our oil industry and public services, as well as expressions of violence, terrorism, and imposition of illegal, and here we come, they love this, the uh, the Venezuelans, okay, criminales medidas coercitivas unilaterales, illegal, criminal, unilateral coercive measures, okay, give it the full name, maybe the first time, but you can call it afterwards UCMs, all right? Which have had a, which have negatively generado un impacto negativo, which have negatively impacted, which have had a ne neg which have had a negative impact on the enjoyment of the human rights of our people. In spite of this, to date, we can say with pride that we have a state which firmly defends the democratic principles enshrined in the constitution, and a people who have. Uh, firmly resisted or who have withstood I think to withstand is like that's very much the same idea that resistir firmemente have withstood los embates del fascismo y de la imposición okay I think I said here you can see I've scribbled something here I think it was onslaught I said they've, we firmly resisted the onslaught of fascism and the imposition of illegal arbitrary uh, illegitimate UCMs however uh, with the benefit of hindsight, I've given this some thought, okay, and I've come up with an idea that you may or may not like, okay. So, okay, get ready for this, all right? Especially those of you who are fans of Shakespeare, who have withstood the slings and arrows of fascism. What do you think? This, it's getting a bit poetic now. The slings and arrows, okay? Hamlet, right? The slings and arrows of outrageous ah oh, what's the line that's the to be or not to be to be or not to be uh, whether to, 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 to resist the stings and arrows of oh you can't find it to be or not to be whether to snowler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles anyway just an idea for you all right Slings and arrows of fascism. Okay, Madam Chair Committee members, Venezuela continues uh, uh, to face a uh, constant threat of poderes foraneos, foreign powers, who uh, seek to transgredir estos principios, who seek to undermine those principles, who seek to violate those principles. In a country which has opted since 1998 for a model of a Estado Social y de Derecho. Okay, so what I said here was a model of a social rule of law state. So rule of law as an as an adjective. Okay, if I was to write it down, it would be rule hyphen of hyphen law. A rule of law state. Okay, I, I'm quite happy with what I did there. Okay, that seems to reflect quite well the idea that they're trying to get across. Okay. Uh, again, we've been targeted, we've been subjected to a uh, multi-form aggression, a multi-dimensional aggression impulsada, por, promoted by, driven by, pushed by the US government, which has negatively impacted the enjoyment of the human rights of the Venezuelan population. Okay, this is another, esta embestida contra uh, Venezuela. Uh, so I, it says assault, this assault against Venezuela has included adoption of a set of UCMs. I was also thinking, now I know it's not the literal meaning, okay, the, the word that came to my mind was uh, a witch hunt, all right, this witch hunt against uh, Venezuela. And I know that the, literally a witch hunt is, what is it, de brujas, um, Casa de Brujas, okay? Casa de, casa de Brujas. Caseria de Brujas. But it somehow it seems to fit nicely. If this witch hunt. What do you think? Tell me in the comments, okay? If you've got any... Remember, if you've got any ideas of your own, tell me in the comments. I need to hear comments. Please give me comments. Tell me if you like the ideas I've given you. Tell me if you've got ideas of your own. Whatever, okay? So this witch hunt against Venezuela has included the adoption of a set of UCMs whose impact has been documented and condemned. Just keep it like that, by the Human Rights Council, the uh, High Commissioner for Human Rights, so, okay, Alto Comisionado de uh, Naciones Unidas para los Derechos, and uh, various Human Rights Council special procedures. In 2021, the Special Rapporteur on the Negative Repercussions of US UCMs, I think that's her official title, yeah, Special Rapporteur on the Negative Impact of Unilateral Coercive Measures, okay, Unilateral Negative Impact. 
Uh, Alina Duan, after visiting the country, said that UCMs had had a devastating effect on the human rights of the Venezuelan people. Solo a titulo informativo. That basically means FYI. You can't really say FYI, but anyway, for your information. Which is incidentally, also whatever. Uh, okay, the Office of Asset Control. Uh, I did look this up. What was it again there? Uh -huh. Office of Foreign Assets Control. That that so uh, yeah, that is actually the, the English acronym. It's a U uh, it's a U U.S. government body under the U.S. Department of Treasury, apparently. Uh, so the Office of Foreign Assets Control of the U.S., as well as other agencies from various countries, have adopted more than 930 restrictive or punitive measures against Venezuela. Relacionada, I think he's a drop. Uh, drastically reducing, drastically limiting the capacities of the state to obtain financial resources as well as the necessary goods and services to fully satisfy, to fully meet the main needs of its inhabitants. See, we're getting through this quite quickly, okay, but still, okay. Seven, uh, this is page seven. Uh. Also, with the complicity of foreign governments, uh, national political actors have have uh, implemented various actions, executed various actions para atentar contra, to again undermine the, uh, to erode again the democratic institutionality of the country. Now this is a bit tricky. Desconociendo al Estado venezolano y a sus legítimas autoridades. Because, okay, in one word, you know, desconocer basically means not to recognize. So what the, the, these the, the Venezuelan opposition has basically chosen, you know, they, they don't recognize the Maduro uh, as the constitutional president. There was that whole business, wasn't there, with, with Guaido, who was uh, suddenly uh, recognized by the U.S. as being the, the president. So a large sort of swathe of the opposition doesn't actually recognize Maduro as being president. Now in Spanish I guess you can sum that up in one word, desconociendo al estado venezolano. However, um, you can't say non recog I can't remember what I said to be honest, non-recognizing, failing to recognize, basically I think in English you say deciding not to recognize the Venezuelan state and its legitimate authorities. I, have to think, I think you have to actually in this occasion add something into the English to make it smooth opting not to recognize did i say maybe withdrawing their recognition that's a bit of it's a tricky one because do, do individuals withdraw their recognition such as countries do they withdraw their rec you might companies may withdraw their recognition of a state okay with an individual it's more like a case of a, they decide not to recognize the state moreover since 2013 radical sectors of the venezuelan ultra light right with international support have promoted and financed recurring violent protests in the country, uh, dando como resultado, leading to uh, la lamentable perdida de vidas, regrettable, unfortunate, sad loss of life, people injured and grave damage to public and private property. In 2017, Venezuela, let's just skip at this point, La Repubblica Bolivariana, was subjected to violent protests for, for political ends, where with evidencia testimonial, with witness testimony, both documented, uh, docu documentary and audiovisual, se corroboró, it was corroborated that, it was established that, Radical protesters had recurred, had resorted systematically to use of firearms. Okay, so some input, so this is some interesting vocab here. It's a bit more. Um, what sort of vocabulary might you call this? Uh, weapons vocabulary, anyway. Uh, uso de armas de fabricación casera, homemade, um, homemade weapons, and. Okay, mortar type explosives. Y así como otros medios cargados de un alto nivel de letalidad. I think I said here, as well as other highly lethal uh, weapons. Okay, I paraphrased it a bit. Well, I mean, well, otherwise, you said, again, if you go literal and with other means charged with a high level of. Uh, lethality. I, I think in English we'd probably say with other highly lethal, potentially lethal weapons. 
Okay, violent, violent protesters. Dirigieron ataques en contra de hospitales. I think you can just sort of sum this up by saying just attacked. All right, just attacked hospitals, schools, centros de acopio. A copio y distribución de alimentos. So collection, basically it's food collection and distribution centers. I had to look this up. I put warehouses here. I didn't have, I thought that was good enough at the time. I didn't have very long to prepare. So I, put, I think I put, um, uh, I don't know, food distribution warehouses. But I think it's food collection and distribution centers. Uh, zonas residenciales, res residential areas, private businesses, uh, basic service facilities, military and police bases, uh, NGO offices, among others. In the context of the protests, uh, we noted, okay, I'm gonna we here, so observable, we noted the use of ninos, niños, niñas, so children, just boys and girls, children, right? And adolescents to uh, prepare incendiary bombs, Custodiar barricada. So I think we man the barricades. I don't know if that's put the correct in this day and age to say that. But um, anyway, I think that's why I said then preparing incendiary bombs to man barricades and agredir a los funcionarios y funcionarias los cuerpos de seguridad and to agredir and to attack and assault uh, officials from the security services. So again, in, in Spanish, it's often, you know, niños and niñas to distinguish between, you know, boys and girls, Funcion funcionarios y funcionarias, masculine and feminine. So as a result, you know, as a generally, because of what we're doing, interpreting, right, going fast, you know, these, this is, I tend to just sort of synthesize it just to one, I'll say children instead of boys and girls. Here, I'll just say officials, okay, I won't say, uh, male officials and female officials. If you do sometimes want to do that, and I do sometimes, right, what I'll do is I'll throw in, um, for example, uh, in the context of protests, we noted the use of, okay, children and adolescents to prepare incendiary bombs, demand barricades, and attack officials, men and women, from the security services. I'll throw in, like, men and women. If, if I Sometimes, if I've got the time, just to add that extra uh, bit of detail. Uh, the aforementioned strategy of regime change also included attempted mercenary invasions and failed coup d'etats. There was an, even an attempt on the life of del primer mandatario nacional. So I actually, I wasn't 100% certain. So I, I looked at, so the head of state, I think that's the easiest thing to say for el primer mandatario. There was an even attempt on the life of the uh, head of state on the uh, political hike. Again, alto mando politico. Um, I wasn't certain if this was a specific one individual or... So I wasn't certain if it was like a, a senior political official or the political high command. I, I think I said the political high command, basically. But I, I, th I think when you look in the dictionary, when it's altos mandos, the plural, then it's like high command, but an un alto mando is a senior official. So native Spanish speakers, it'd be good if you could clarify that. Is that talking about a single person or, or, or more than one person? Um, and militar, uh, so senior political and military officials, perhaps that, that, that would work well, right? And diplomatic representatives in our country on the 4th of August 2018. Nevertheless, Venezuela continues undefeated, I said Invicta, undefeated on its path towards peace and protection of the rights of its people. Madam Chair, January 2021, following parliamentary elections, there was the establishment of a new national assembly, uh, which led to the approval of thus far 67 laws, many of which are key in promoting and protecting the civil and political rights of the Venezuelan population. Similarly, in the midst of the broadest and most plural uh, debate of ideas, the constitutional president, uh, Nicolas Maduro Moros, you could probably just sort it to Nicolas Maduro, I think that, that's, you don't need to give him the full name every time, you just say uh, President Maduro, uh, during the chorus during the period that corresponds to this fifth report, during the reporting period as a shortcut, has implemented policies with the goal, cuyo horizonte uh, son, with the uh, um, with the goal of achieving uh, equality and social justice. I think that's a good way of rendering that. Fortunately, the Venezuelan economy, despite, again, incessantes agresiones foraneas, uh, unceasing, again, non-stop foreign aggressions, has begun to register major progress. Uh, in what remains of this year and next year, 
Se proyecta in Venezuela, the forecast, let's turn that se proyecta into a now, in the forecast in Venezuela is for sustainable economic growth with an increase in uh, national productivity levels of the public and private sectors. Committee members, la figura del, I guess you can say the mechanism, the national dialogue mechanism, where you could just perhaps leave, just say the national dialogue has been a sustained policy of the national executive, uh, promoting uh, a resolution of conflict or conflict resolution, conflict settlement, dispute settlement, perhaps, dispute settlement. Uh, in the context of the rule of law, uh, achieving uh, satisfactory agreements for the well-being of the people. In El Marco, I tend to say in the I always think that's the safest way to go in the context of. We should recall that President Maduro has made more than 500 public calls for dialogue between Venezuelans. As part of this policy para el reencuentro y la reconciliación nacional. No, I think I, I left el reencuentro out. I thought, okay, as part of this policy for national reconciliation. Maybe I was seeking forgiveness as part of this national policy of uh, national forgiveness and reconciliation for reencuentro. In 2020, the head of state granted un indulto, okay, importance of legal vocab here, un indulto, a pardon, to hundreds of people who had been uh, tried criminally, procesadas penalmente, who had been prosecuted, perhaps you could just say, for their participation in acts against the democratic stability of the country. We regret that this dialogue uh, was unable to continue due to the El Sequest, the abduction of Venezuelan diplomat Alex Saab by the US government, uh, who was one of the per people who was part of the Venezuelan dele delegation. And this in clear violation of international law and international human rights law. You may want to throw in this. Here, okay. This is this sentence. Often, you know, that often in Latin American Spanish, you have these long, ra long rambling sentences. This isn't the worst, definitely. The, I didn't have to at least do too much. Um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Susi sune, chopping it up anyway. Uh, aprovechamos este espacio. We take this opportunity. We don't take advantage of this space. Okay. We just take this opportunity, para denunciar, to denounce, okay, that could work, or condemn once more this arbitrary detention and uh, criminal abduction. We reiterate the call to this committee, se pronuncia. Okay, what I tend to say with pronunciarse is because this is what they use. Uh, when I worked in New York at the Security Council, um, in French and Spanish, um, whenever... You know, whenever the Security Council is called on to take action, it would always be pronunciarse, so prononce. And just in the Security Council um, parlance, it was always like to take action. And take action seems, it's quite, it's a bit vague, okay? It's not committing you to anything. Is it like doing something physical or is it just making a statement? And that seems to be a good sort of solution to me whenever I hear pronunciarse. Just, just to take action once more and call for his swift, immediate release. Liberation. Liberation. Nah, you liberate countries, but you release people, okay? Madam Chair, uh, in Venezuela, let's just say, let's make, let's make Venezuela the subject. Venezuela has adopted measures to aumentar la conciencia, to raise awareness of the covenant, not the pact, okay? Don't fall into that trap, the covenant, and its applicability in national law. Uh, this includes the first National Human Rights Plan 2016-2019 whose uh, projects, actions, and necessary resources for implementation fueron incorporados, were integrated into, or you can say were incorporated, incorporated, in, in, integrated, included in, if, you know, to keep it simple, uh, in the respective institutional operational plans of the uh, bodies of the powers of state, los órganos de los poderes del Estado. Of the uh, uh, the operational plans of the or maybe just say of the authorities of state, Venezuela is a country where all citizens, in, uh, including human rights defenders, defensores de derechos humanos (HRDs), can exercise on a daily basis their rights and activities, can perform exercise right, with full guarantees and other. Protection offered by the Constitution, laws, and treaties ratified by the country. Article 6 states the Constitution enshrines the right of citizens to peacefully protest without weapons, 
uh, without any other requisites other than those established by the law. Moreover, it enshrines prohibition on the use of firearms and toxic substances when it comes to el control de manifestaciones. Uh, we talk about crowd control in English. Could we say that in, in crowd control? Obviously, it's, it's when police are overseeing a uh, protest. And we often use uh, in English when we talk about that. We talk we use police as a verb, okay, in policing protests, okay, that in English. That that's um, it's a good way, word. To, to, it's a good uh, it's a good way to use police, right? So maybe you could say, moreover, enshrines the prohibition of the use of firearms and uh, toxic substances uh, when uh, policing protests. Between 2017 and September 2021, se desarrollaron miles, you could maybe there were, I just say there were thousands of various political expressions and public uh, manifestations, public protests, highlighting the full exercise of the right to assembly, okay, derecho a la reunión, right to assembly, and protest, manifestación in the country. Uh, in, a, in a free manner, in ajustada a la ley, in line with the law. Again, this, then, then another one of the, you know these freedoms: the freedom of uh, freedom of assembly, freedom of association, freedom of protest. So the, the right to association is recognised and protected in the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Well, we stress that between 2012 and 2021, 898 u trade union organisations were registered. <laughs> Um, similarly, a total of 1,017, so again, if you're doing this without text, you might be wanting to round down some of these figures, you know, a total of 1,000 social movements grouped around uh, 25 sectors and 23,052 socio-productive organisations were registered with the uh, Ministry of uh, Communities and Social Movements. All right, so again, if you you might have wanted to just uh, round that down to 23,000. So no, just notice what I did here. I, just, I left out the poder popular, all right? In 2023, uh, there are existing 3,641. Maybe you could just round down to 3,600 communities and 49,183 or just 49,000 uh, community councils registered throughout the country. You don't have to see national territory, just through the country, uh, which bring together almost 10 million citizens, men and women, if you like, uh, which demonstrates the social that the de demonstrates that the social fabric of Venezuela is broad, deep and powerful. The Venezuelan constitution enshrined in cross-cutting fashion, transversal cross-cutting, a model of participative protagonistic... Okay, what do we do with corresponsable other than leave it out? Um, because corresponsabilidad tends to be shared responsibility. Maybe you could say equal, you know, it's the idea of sharing everyone, you know, a model of participative... Um, equal protagonistic democracy of the population which has led to substantial modifications in electoral practice uh, going from uh, the a concepción del sufrayo como derecho uh, which goes from seeing suffrage as a right you can say suffrage in english you know, you know the suffragettes right remember them if we don't okay then maybe that's if you're familiar with British history, but the right to suffrage means the right to vote. So the, the concept of suffrage as a right to the uh, to the formalization of new forms. Consagrasi, if you don't want to keep always saying enshrinement, sometimes the formalization, all right, of new forms of participation in politics. Como se enfermo en el párrafo 184? You could just see here as per. As per paragraph 184 of the Fifth National Report, in the period 2012-2020, se desarrollaron. There were uh, 10 electoral processes uh, at a national level, including three presidential elections. Uh, in Venezuela, voting is a right and is not qualified or not classed as a duty um, because it is it is based entirely on a voluntary and personal decision. The system of voting in Venezuela 
is fully automated, automated, when I say automatized, we say automated, right? Reliable and audited in all stages before, during and after each process. Los medios de verificación, uh, the means of verification. Again, you could say that, nothing better has come to mind, I, but I guess it means the counting the votes. Vote counts allow us to uh, make, uh, allow us to compare the results, which leads to la cual arroja la, uh, which leads to accuracy in the functioning of the electoral platform. La cual arroja, which generates accuracy in the functioning of the electoral platform, produces accuracy. Madam Chair, furthermore, progress in the sphere of the rights of women have been significant in 2019. Venezuela's gender development indicator stood at 1,013, making it in the group of, putting it in the group of countries with the highest level of quality in terms of achievements in the human development indicator between women and men. It's a bit, a bit verbose, so again, that, you just sort of try and, yeah, you, more or less if you just stick with it word for word here, the, the sentence comes out more or less cogent. With respect to discrimination against, okay, the LGBTI community, if you want, to, again, if you're falling behind and you heard him just going, Respecto a la discriminación con las personas lesbianas, gays, bisexuales, transgenders, intersexuales, and you, you just, you could just say, oh, with respect to the LGBTI community. The Venezuela state has uh, stepped up measures to prevent and sanction all discrimination in step with the constitution, uh, including with those regard, uh, including with regards to sexual orientation. In November 2020, La Defensoria del Pueblo, the Ombudsman, uh, created, a sp created a special delegated Ombudsman uh, with jurisdiction, competencia a nivel nacional, jurisdiction at national level, uh, authorities at national level, to protect, uh, okay, personas de la sexo diversidad, so in the report they were talking about sexually diverse people, okay, uh, to protect sexually diverse people, which reports to, which is attached to the Department of Issues of Special Attention. That's a bit of a, a very bureaucratic name for a department. Sounds like something out of Kafka, doesn't it? The Department of Matters of Special Attention, Issues of Special Attention, but whatever. Distinguished members of the committee, Venezuela. In Venezuela, the right to life is inviolable. No law can establish the death penalty and no authority can apply it. Our country guarantees that officials responsible for enfor hacer cumplir la ley, enforcing the law, in particular when it comes to uh, citizen security, act in line with norms on the progressive and differentiated use of force. These are U UN guidelines. I was trying to find out the exact um, wording, but I think, I think it's the pro progressive and differentiated use of force. Um, Sancionando ejemplarmente cualquier inobservancia de las mismas. If you were sancioning, I think I, I think I may have is e ejemplarmente. I might have left out when I was doing it. Just san sanctioning fully any non-compliance thereof is perhaps the best way of putting it. Or maybe if you really wanted, you know, sanctioning to the letter that really maybe gets across that idea of e ejemplarmente sanctioning to the letter any non-compliance thereof. As part of its letter of understanding signed and uh, renewed uh, between the uh, Bolivarian Republic and the and OHCHR, there we go, Oficina del Alto Comisionado de Nacional, okay, the OHCHR, se ha prestado asistencia, assistant, technical assistance has been given to the uh, Okay, let's leave out the Poder Popular. The Ministry for uh, Interior Relations, Justice and Peace para, actualizas, para la actualización to update uh, police standards applied to uh, services of the greatest complexity, including, okay, pro protocolos de actuaciones. I found that tends to be guidelines. Action, pro I have said in the past that action protocols, including action protocols, I think in the report they were saying including guidelines for tactical groups and again control de reuniones públicas y manifestaciones again you can for control you say and for policing public meetings and demonstrations our constitution prohibits slavery and other similar forms such as servidumis servitude and human trafficking trata de personas must know that 
Uh, in tal sentido, we could perhaps just drop that. Make our lives easier. Venezuelan legislation contains sufficient normative developments to guarantee protection of the physical integrity of persons, such as the special law to prevent and sanction torture and other cruel, inhumane, degrading treatment. That's one of the other other uh, conventions, one of the other treaty uh, bodies. The CERD, uh, not the CERD, the, um, the CAP, the, Com the Committee on Against Torture and Cruel, Inhumane, Degrading Treatment. And the organic law against delinquencia organizar organized crime and financing of terrorism, which establishes severe penalties and payment of compensation or payment of damages. To, uh, damages, we often say, right? It's compensation in English uh, for the victims of the crime of human trafficking. With respect to care for victims of human trafficking abroad, we have activated a uh, repatriate uh, a repatriation protocol for um, national victims of this scourge, men and women, again, los y las. Chair, Venezuela has also decreed a full-on fight against corruption, lucha frontal, or maybe you could say, if you're getting fancy, has decided to tackle corruption head-on. That's how perhaps an English speaker would say it. In recent years, la, controla, la Contraloría General, this was the controller like they have in the US right and it's spelt the comptroller um, I know that's something they have in the US politics they don't have it in the UK but that's how it was rendered in the report so the controller general of the Republic has uh, carried out more than 10,000 administrative procedures in line with the law against corruption uh, resulting in 5,109 officials being sanctioned with respect to 2023, the National Assembly has sanctioned organic special laws with the goal of bolstering the capacities of the state to effectively combat criminal practices against public property, patrimonio publico, public property, public assets perhaps, delictive practices, criminal I think, well, you can say delictive in English, but I think criminal, criminal practices against public property, I think, is the best solution there. With respect to the institutions to protect human rights, the Ombudsman continues cumpliendo su mandato to discharge his mandate to pr promote, protect, uh, vigilancia and uh, supervise, oversee uh, the human rights. Uh, in apego a los principios de París, okay, abiding by the Paris principles. I think I said you could again or say in line with the Paris principles. That's what all uh, ombudsman uh, mechanisms around the world that, that, that they need to be. That they sort of commit to um, abiding by the Paris principles if they want to sort of join. It's called. Um, I think it's National Human Rights Institutions, okay, NHRIs, and then. That's what ombudsman's offices. They all they they are NHRIs, okay, National Human Rights Institutions. And then there is a um, there's like a, a big organization of that brings together all the NHRIs, a big club. Or if you want to be a member of the club of NHRIs, it's called Ganry, and it's I think it's the Global Alliance on National Human Rights Institutions. They often refer to it as Ganry, that, that is a, uh, an acronym you will run into, I think they're based here in Geneva. The National Council of Human Rights, as the body responsible for coordinating and promoting national policy in the field, continues to develop action to ensure the integration of a human rights approach in all action by the state. Similarly, the theme of human rights has been included in uh, Formacion Continua on-the-job training Continuous training, you know, it's like for you know, in your job, and you you continue to receive, you continue to receive training to continue sort of upgrading your qualifications. So you, so you can say on the on the job, continuous training, and fourth level training in the Bolivarian Military University of Venezuela, in the uh, Experimental Security University in the National School of Public Defence, the National School of the Magistrature, uh, the National School of Prosecutors, the National uh, School of Human Rights and Public Defence, the National School of Training of uh, Penitentiary Civil Servants, and in the Argelia Laya 
feminist school of the South. So don't worry about when they start quoting these sort of universities, national level institutions, uh, so long as you get them close, uh, you know, you can't be expected to know these, you know, just like that, what their, their names are going to be. Um, so long as you just more or less stick with it, D don't let them escape from you too much, okay? For example, sometimes with this one here, for example, La Escuela Nacional de Formación de Servidores Públicos y Penitenciarios. See, in English, perhaps the nicest way to say this would be um, maybe the National Training School for Penitentiary Officials. Or the national the national penitentiary officials training school. Okay, but to do that, you have to wait. That, that way, you have to wait until you hear the penitentiarios, right? And by that point, you might have forgotten what's come before. Okay, is it like a, a school or is it you know a university? You, you might forget that it was formacion. So I tend to just sort of stick. As I'm hearing it, I'll just say, you know, the, okay, the national school for the training of public servants in penitentiary institutions. You just sort of make as you go along. You just tweak it. You know, I might, you know, I'd have probably heard servidores públicos, I'd have probably leapt in with, okay, this is the National School for Training of Civil Servants. Then you hear penitenciarios, and it's like, no. Um, and then, so you just add, you know, in penitentiary institutions. I did look up, you, you, I, can't, I couldn't find the English for all of these. I mean, there is the Bolivarian, the Bolivarian Military University is, is quite an important one. But these other ones, as I say, you can more or less sort of wing it. All right. Most countries, okay, have a national school um, of the uh, let's see, Escuela Nacional de la Magistratura. And if you just click on the English, it gives you the National School of the Judiciary as a sort of automatic translation. That might be all right actually, for when you because a lot of these a lot of countries have this Escuela Nacional de la Magistratura. Maybe that's a good solution for doing it. The, the judiciary. So this would be National School of Prosecutors. Yeah, I've tried to look for this one for the Escuela Nacional de la Defensa Pública. I, I can't find an English, um, a good English translation for it. So again, just with these uh, national level institutions, just just get out the main, the main elements. All right, the main words without having to have the, the institution sound perfect. Don't, don't worry about that. Okay, Madam Chair, members of the committee, before concluding, I'd like to stress that we otorgamos vital importancia, we set great store by, we prioritize, uh, okay, here it's we st uh, to ensuring, okay, para que el tema. So we, we set great store by ensuring that the theme of human rights is uh, treated or addressed objectively and, impar and impartially without selectivity, a double standards or politicization in a spirit of genuine and cooperation, uh, genuine dialogue and cooperation uh, in keeping with the principles enshrined in the UN Charter. Uh, we look forward to a, esperamos sostener, just, just we look forward to a fruitful dialogue that allows the Venezuelan state to have orientaciones. This is sort of important. Okay, so generally the best thing to do in English here is guidance, okay? Not like direction, signpost, just guidance to give. So the Venezuelan state can have guidance from uh, your members on the basis of a mutual respect and in line with the principle of international law. Our delegation uh, will listen constructively to your questions, comments and recommendations during this interactive dialogue on the fifth report of the Venezuelan state to the Human Rights Committee, and we will um, and we will provide our response and we and we will provide our responses there to uh, oportunamente in a timely fashion. Thank you very much, and that's where the fun and games begin. Uh, okay, so there you have. I think I managed to do this in about an hour. Fair lot, oh, just as I said, this was, took maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes to deliver. Already here, just a huge amount of interesting vocab, both, you know, at a bureaucratic level, but also these words like embates, embestidas, contra magnicidios. Yeah, slings and arrows, slings and arrows. Uh, I hope you found it useful, okay? I, that's all I can say. You can go and listen to my version of what I actually did there in the... Um, and the audio file, you can open and listen to what I said there in the, in the heat of action. But anyway, I, I suggest that, uh, yeah, that you, uh, you record yourself doing this and then come and watch the episode. But if you're already watching this part of the episode by now, it probably means you've already done that. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. 
please in the comments uh, do 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 give me any uh, ideas of your own things that you've learned tell me what you've learned yeah go and watch some of my other episodes okay go and watch new shit I've learned in the last couple of weeks um, lots of stuff here if you enjoyed doing Venezuela there's pl I've done lots of other Venezuelan statements that I'll put links to there uh, in the little boxes that you can click on and, and try those you'll you're guaranteed every Venezuelan statement you will learn something new if nothing more a new one or two words okay they're really good practice um, yeah so like share and subscribe and with that so I have to go and edit this now and try and get it out to you post it by tomorrow and tomorrow I'm off to uh, Abu Dhabi and so uh, well I'm going to enjoy the, um, the sun and the sea I'll be thinking of you guys back there in Europe in the booth while I'm away. Uh, anyway, yes, like, share, subscribe, all that remains to be said. Is the episode 193 of the Interpretation Station stands adjourned. <laughs>